dear diary. It feels like things are moving slowly as I try and get settled in here at Linfield. I'm trying to identify some new players to join us. Hopefully we'll get some across the line soon and improve the squad to add to the three who have already come in. We are still in Conference League qualifying and take on a Polish outfit in the second Q round. It sounds like this will be tougher than what we faced in my first few games in charge, but hopefully we find a way to keep moving on. Otherwise, maybe we need to find a new tactical style for my new club. Until next time. Welcome to episode 21 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM and coming up today in the second episode with Linfield we pretty much picked things up where we left off at the end of yesterday's episode the first one here if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner but today it is the second qualifying round of the conference league and this time we take on a Polish outfit in Piast Glowicki so if you're looking forward to this one which will also include a little bit of a transfer update then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but as I said, not much has happened off the back of the first episode here yesterday where we played the first qualifying round in the conference league. It is just taking a little while for me here to get settled in to the new club off the back of a few seasons at Banbridge Town, but that is okay because we are still, of course, in Conference League qualifying, so we can make the most of that. And coming up today, we do take on this Polish outfit, who, according to the news reports we have been getting, should be quite heavy favourites for these two ties coming up. So this could be the last qualifying round that we do play in the Conference League this season. Of course, over the past few seasons, Linfield, under their previous manager, has struggled to pick up a win in any European ties. We got that monkey off our back in our first game in charge in yesterday's episode. It'll be interesting to see how we do get on here against the club with a slightly higher reputation and also from a stronger footballing nation. I think it is fair to say in Poland, it was fair to say we're going to come into this one as outsiders. But before we do get into these two legs in the second qualifying round, we have made a few transfers. They unfortunately, though, cannot all play for us in the second qualifying round because you can only register one new player per new qualifying round in the Conference League. So that means that only one of these three players who we have signed was able to get added to the squad, but three free transfers that we have been able to bring in not too long before we do play the second qualifying round. The first of those is a left winger who can also play in the midfield and up forward out right as well as in the DM role. So quite a versatile player in Jake Kane. He was previously at Liverpool for the start of his career. So quite a good get for us here at Linfield. To get him in 22 years old, three and a half star current ability, four star potential, certainly a very, very good squad player who will probably put a little bit of pressure on those who are starting in the positions that he can cover. So a good get for us there, Jake Kane, formerly of Liverpool, the player who we have actually registered for this next round of Conference League qualifying. This is the guy, Charlie Sayers. That is because despite the fact our first choice left back did return in that second leg yesterday, our backup, it was still probably the weakest area of the squad. So we have added this guy in to our Conference League squad as that backup left back. Three star current ability, four and a half star white potential, formerly of Tottenham and Southend. So another Englishman, but he is under 21 years old. So that is quite useful for the domestic competitions because he will not need to be registered for those, but certainly a bit of an upgrade on the likes of Keelan Reid, who was previously our backup left back that we did use in yesterday's episode, and the other player that we have signed so far going into the first leg of the second qualifying round, he won't be playing in this game, but Cammy Logan arrives as our new first choice right back here at Linfield. The Scott, 22 years old, three-star current ability, four-star potential, is a lot better suited to that role at wing back than both Manny Lund and Connor Pepper. So he is going to be starting for us when we do get the opportunity to put him in to that best level, and he has started his career off at Hearts in Scotland, obviously got quite a few loan spells while he was there, and we now pick him up, and hopefully he will be a good right back for us going forward for our time here 
at Linfield. It's a free, free transfer. There could be a few more that do happen throughout the course of today's episode. We've also put some bids in with actual money for some other players as well. We'll cover those off come the end of today's episode and see whether we are still in the reckoning to make the third qualifying round of the Conference League. But as I said, we are not the favourites for this one. Looks like it's going to be a little bit tougher than our opposition from Azerbaijan in yesterday's episode. In terms of our actual starting eleven for this one, exactly the same as it was in those two legs in yesterday's episode. Noel Quinn back, of course, at left back. And there is Charlie Sayers on the bench. But those are our only changes. So it is back to our best eleven. And hopefully we can do something similar to what we did in the first league yesterday, pick up a big win at home, and then it doesn't really matter quite so much, the result away from home, but it does look like, as I said, we go into this one against our Polish opposition as the outsiders, but hopefully we do a good performance here because that second league yesterday, not that great away from home. If we perform poorly here, we might need to consider moving away from the slightly negative in terms of the low defensive line and the low block wing play that we were using at Banbridge Town, obviously with Linfield being the favourites for this Northern Irish Premiership, we could potentially go to a system and a style which is a little bit more attacking, seeing as we are ranked a lot higher than we would have been at Banbridge Town at any time that we were there. At that club, we'll get into the action for today's episode and come back shortly from Windsor Park for the first leg of the second qualifying round as we take on Piaskowicki from Poland. And of course we do have TV coverage and the anthem for this Conference League clash. There we are as we ran through before playing the 4-4-2 yet again with just those changes at left back with players coming back from suspension and that new signing there are our Polish opposition. They are playing a 4-2-3-1. It'll be interesting to see how we do get on here in this home league. And inside the first minute, we have our first highlight here of the first leg of the second qualifying round. It is the opposition goalkeeper here who pumps one forward and they do win that ball in the air. They are in the red today. We are in the blue with the white shorts. That's going to take a little bit of adjusting off the back of mostly playing in red uniforms back at Banbridge Town. But now Johns will pump this one forward. Looking for McDay doesn't quite link up with him. But now Cooper is in position, plays the ball over the top there. For McDay, beats the goalkeeper from a tight angle, but unfortunately, the assistant referee on the far side has put his flag up for offside. That would have been an absolutely brilliant start, but unfortunately, he is just offside by a stride, so the goal is not going to count. Still nil all early doors. And only a few minutes off the back of that opening highlight, a goal which was ruled out for offside. It is down the other end now, our Polish opposition do have the ball. They put a ball there into the mixer, but thankfully, Johns makes the save from that header from Tura, which was pretty much at point blank range, and this highlight is going to continue. Johns tries to find a teammate, but it does look like the Polish team here have a bit of ascendancy potentially in the air, especially at the back, so that could be something interesting to keep an eye out on. They play a ball over the top there for Jorge Felix, and he looks like he's a bit too much pace there for our players. Interesting square ball, but to be fair to him, Tom Hately, I hate that one because that is a very good strike and he puts that one in the top left corner and we go 1-0 down here at home just inside the 10 minute mark. Did wonder what Jorge Felix was doing there passing that one so far back but Hately in a ton of space and rockets that one near enough to that top left corner and we go 1-0 down here at the 9 minute mark. And not too long off the back of that opening goal, it is now on the halfway line and is a throw in to our Polish opposition. So off the back of that chance for us, which unfortunately was offside, they have started to grab the ascendancy in this one. And yet again, they ping this one out to Jorge Felix on that left-hand side. Lund brings him down just inside the box. And this could be a big double for the Polish team here, just inside the 15-minute mark. In this first league, the player is going to line up the penalty. The goalkeeper goes the right way, Johns. But unfortunately, Gregors puts that one away. And it's not been a good start for us here off the back of that early chance. As I said, ruled out for offside. Since then, Jorge Felix is pulling the strings out there. And they make it 2-0 early doors. And only a few minutes off the back of that second goal from the penalty spot. We were briefly on the attack there. But it is the Polish team who clear their lines. But Lunders back there to retreat and get position back for us. Hopefully, if we're going to stay in this tie, 
we can get a goal sooner rather than later. Great chance there for Jordan Stewart off the back of that square ball from Cooper. And maybe we've found a way back into this tie in this home league, which is oh so important. That makes it 2-1, just shy of the 20 minute mark. So certainly lots of action in the early stages of this game. Nice little dink over the top there from Palmer and Cooper, who did assist that goal, which got ruled out for offside. He gets one properly this time. Stewart pokes that one home and we grab a goal back at the 20 minute mark. And with 10 minutes to go in this first half, we do have our next highlight. It starts off with a goal kick to the Polish team. Yet again, they win that ball in there and from there to roll was in behind, but thankfully decent slide tackle there from one of our players. And Johns will try and get us here to play out from the back. But apart from that goal, which we did score in the offside one, it has pretty much been one-way traffic here to our Polish friends. They play this one forward to Lille here. Is in yet again, he puts that one past the goalkeeper. And we are now in a world of trouble. 10 minutes shy of half time. Yet again, they grab a two goal buffer here at Windsor Park. And it does look indeed like this Polish team are a fair bit better than what we did take on in yesterday's episode. That one, it looks like, actually goes through the legs of our goalkeeper. And that makes it 3 1 just before half time in the first leg. And that is half time in this first leg of the second qualifying round, as you can see. Apart from that goal, which we did score from our one shot on target, and of course the offside one, it has been completely one way traffic there to the Polish outfit. So we're definitely going to need to change a few things here at half time. Our new left back can come on for Quinn, who did struggle in that first half. Also, Lund not doing too well, so Pepper can come on for him. And also, Stephen Fallon is probably a player we can also take off. Kirk Miller can come on for him, with him only being on a 6.3. There's a few other players out there, not on great ratings, but we can't change too much. We need to save up a little bit for the second half, just in case we do get an injury, but that was a pretty bad first half. We're going to need to turn things around fairly soon to try and keep ourselves alive in this tie. 3-1 down at half time in the first league at home. And only a few minutes into the second half, a chance for us here to pick a goal back through a corner, but unfortunately, Kalika just puts that one wide, and we are still 3-1 down. And not too long off the back of that corner for us to kick off the second half. We are now down the other end here. It is a throw-in for the Polish team. They put that one right on the edge of the box. Our man starts to make his way inside it. But thankfully that shot does come off the underside of the crossbar. We clear that one away. And with a half hour left, we are still 3-1 down. And I think it's time for us now to make a few more substitutions. McDade up front struggling. We'll bring on the former Bambridge town man on loan and Jay McDowell for him, and see if that helps us get a goal back. And going forward a little bit further to the 17 minute mark, it's time for us to make our last substitution. Chris Shields, good player for us, but unfortunately not doing well today, and has just picked up a yellow card. Kyle McLean will come on for him, and we are still 3-1 down. And just about to end injury time in this one, as you can see stats-wise, we've actually evened things up quite a bit during the second half, but unfortunately just that one shot on target, that could prove quite costly overall because we are going to travel to Poland with a 3-1 deficit to overcome. And as we saw yesterday, we couldn't get the job done in Azerbaijan. So I don't like our chances of doing it against a better team over in Poland. But in the end, didn't actually play that badly overall. But just the finishing, it looks like, did let us down. But fair play to PR Skill Wiki. They were certainly the better team throughout most of that game. And it does look like unless we can pull something big out in that second league away from home, we are going to be ending our first European journey of the save. In the second qualifying round, we can't register any new players off the back of that first league either. So we'll come back shortly and get straight into the action, needing a big turnaround to keep ourselves alive in conference league qualifying. And we are back with the second leg in Poland. Both teams, same formation and pretty much the same players as well, at least in terms of us. And the first highlight is in favour of our Polish opposition today. They are in the blue. We are in the white with the red shorts. And immediately they get on the front foot. Jorge Felix is proving to be an absolute menace for them here. Squares that one for Sapanen up front. And they make it 1-0 on the day. 4-1 overall. And it does look like our time in Europe is going to end here in the second qualifying round of the Conference League. Now three goals behind, away from home. And not too long before half time, we have our next highlight in this game. We try and clear that one through our goalkeeper, but yet again, the Polish team here 
do get the ascendancy in the air at the back. They tight their time over the ball as they can, of course, with this big lead that they have built up. And Jorge Felix, who is having an absolute blinder in this tie, was on the ball the again, but they do just take their time here as they try and build an attack. Plays that one out to Lanier this time. He takes his time as well. Plays that back to the centre-back. Haitley, who got that good first goal in the other game. They put this one in the mixer for their striker, but thankfully this time he misses the target. But still, the Polish opposition do have the ascendancy here, and we are still 4-1 down, just shy of half-time. And that is half-time in the second leg of the second qualifying round conference league tie. As you can see, we deserve to be 1-0 down. We are not playing that well. Maybe we do need to try and change our tactic going into the start of the domestic season, albeit we probably won't take on teams this good, but time to make some changes at halftime and try and give ourselves a little bit of credibility. It will be Miller, McLean, and Pepper coming on at halftime to try and just improve the players who were struggling out there and also on yellow cards, but we are certainly up against it as we get the second half of the second league underway for one down. And just past the hour mark, we're going to make our last few substitutions in this one. No highlights so far in the second half, but we do need to try and change something here to get us on the front foot. So we're going to make a few substitutions. Noel Quinn not performing well and has just picked up a yellow card. Charlie Sayers can come on for him. And also Robbie McDay yet again, only on a 6.4 this time. Chris McKee will come on for him. And hopefully we can at least get a goal back inside these last 25 minutes. And not too long off the back of those last few substitutions, we are now down the end here for a free kick. A few good chances for them there to beat Johns at the near post, but thankfully he comes up with a few saves and keeps it at 1-0 on the day. 4-1 on aggregate as we try and up the tempo and just do something to get a goal back. And we are now inside the last 10 minutes of this one. We are definitely making our way out of Europe unless we come up with something absolutely magical inside the last few minutes of this one to try and take this one into extra time, but a good chance here for Total to make it 2-0 on the day, and he will do so, and that will wrap that one up. We are now 2-0 down, 5-1 overall, and fair play to our Polish opposition. They are just a lot better than we are here at Linfield at the moment, especially before we can really put our stamp on this team who we have inherited from the previous manager, but to be fair, I think the tactic that we brought over from Bambridge Town isn't really stacking up here against these half-decent European teams. And I say that knowing that this team isn't actually probably that good overall in Europe, having to come through qualifying. And now they get a chance here to do something on the counter-attack off the back of a corner, which we did have. They have the ball here just inside our half. That was very interesting. But Jorge Felix somehow gets that ball up to Tolil, and he grabs a quick-fire double inside the last 10 minutes of this one. And that makes it 6-1 overall. 3-0 on the day. They well and truly have had the better of things in this tie. That was very interesting how that ball did fall to Felix, but nonetheless, he shuffles that one through for Tolil, and we are getting absolutely battered here. 6-1 with only a few minutes left. We start to enter injury time, and just to cap things off, time for the Mark Richardson. Yeah. Because Joel Cooper has picked up an injury, obviously. We can't take him off because we have already used up all our substitutes. And we had to sit for a pretty pointless end highlight as well, but nothing happened. We get dumped out of Europe very, very comprehensively there by P.R. Sklowicki. Six goals to one overall and 3-0 in the second leg. We definitely needed to do a lot better in that home leg like we did in yesterday's episode. And we got absolutely thumped yet again away from home. So that is a little bit concerning. It might be time for us to go away from the tactic that we did use at Bambridge Town, and no more Europe for this season here at Limfield. We get dumped out very comprehensively in the second qualifying round of the Conference League. And back in the inbox off the back of those two legs in that second qualifying round, as I mentioned, we got absolutely slaughtered in those, so definitely a bit of room for improvement if we are going to stay here at Limfield in future seasons and try and do something in Europe, because that was pretty pathetic. It has to be said, albeit if we are still here next year, we can, of course, call on a squad, which will definitely have a few different players in it once we can do a little bit more in the transfer window and actually use some of those players while we are here. We'll just do a quick update on this injury to our first choice left winger. In Joel Cooper, pulled ankle ligaments. He is out for two weeks, thankfully. Should be back in time 
for the start of our Premiership campaign, as you can see up there, that first game away at Coleraine is in 16 days. He should just be back in time for that one, for the timing of that injury. Not actually too bad, all things considered, he should be back for that first game of the Premiership season. As you can see, we also get a decent chunk of money for taking part in those Conference League qualifiers. But I think it's fair to say that was a pretty disappointing end to our brief European campaign here at Limfield. But it does mean now I can take a bit more time off field to try and sort out the squad before we do head into the start of this Premiership season. Still favourites for that competition. We won't get down on ourselves too much. But certainly does look like there is some room for improvement there. Even though we're probably not going to take on teams of that quality here in the Northern Irish Premiership and before we do wrap things up today a few other things to cover off we have made a few more transfers some of these you guys will find very very interesting we've actually spent a little bit of money on two players the first of those I think you would have seen coming from Banbridge Town Sean Quinn comes here and goes straight back out on loan to Banbridge Town we paid £3,000 for him quite a good price there for a player with decent potential even here at Limfield, it's certainly quite good having him here. He is back out on loan though at Banbridge Town where he will get some first team football this season in the Premiership. And the other player that we have signed for a fee is from Lincoln City in England. And that is a centre-back in Pauly O'Connor for £24,000. He looks like a pretty decent centre-back with a couple of quite good attributes, especially here in Northern Ireland. A couple of yellows there. And he should do a great job for us at the back and hopefully improve that defence, which was certainly quite leaky there in those Conference League qualifiers, expecting big things there out of the former Lincoln City man. And the other transfer there, the free one from ours, was actually one that our under 18s manager did make. He's a player with only okay potential, but getting him on a free will take a punch on the 15 year old from Northern Ireland, but definitely adding a little bit of quality there, especially in that centre back position with the addition of Poldy O'Connor. And of course, Sean Quinn does join us here at Banbridge Town, the player who came for our youth intake last season when we were manager of that club. And as I mentioned during that game, we might need to start to think about changing this tactic. It looks like the 4-4-2 wing play with the low block is not really going to work here at Limfield. In terms of what our assistant manager does suggest in terms of something else, this is probably something which we could consider going for. It's fluid counter-attack, 4-2-3-1. It might suit us domestically, as we are supposed to be the best team here in Northern Ireland, so maybe having a few more attacking players will suit us as well, of course, as having those two DMs in front of the centre-backs as well, if they do struggle like they did in that Conference League qualifier. And as well as that, I have also loaded up a 4-2-3-1 vertical tiki tacker something which did work for us last year in our build a nation save at Volsunga albeit might be a little bit too complicated for players at this level so I think we might change to a fluid counter attack but we'll just see how we do get on in a few friendlies against fellow Northern Irish teams I think with that wing play system just make sure that we are still struggling with that before we change anything because if we are struggling against some teams from lower divisions who we are going to play in those friendlies, that's probably a sign we need to change something before we do start the Premiership season. But I think that will do it for today's episode. A few signings as well as getting absolutely smashed there in that second qualifying round of the Conference League. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well in terms of when we'll come back. For the next episode, it will be at some stage in August. The game which obviously stands out with us being Linfield is a bit of a derby as we travel away to take on Glen Torren. By that stage, I should have settled on a new tactic or at least found out if we are going to use a new tactic if the wing play is not working by that stage. So we might have a new tactic by the time we do come back for that game in tomorrow's episode. And as mentioned, that is one of the teams our fans do want us to do better than as it is a rivalry. We are supposed to finish above them in the league, of course, with us being the favourites, but our supporters 
require that. So it would definitely be useful for us if we were going to win those games. That's what's going to be coming up in tomorrow's episode. A bit of a derby there as we travel away to take on Glen Torren. And maybe by then as well, we would have done a few more transfers. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.